Hey, hello there, RJBTV from RJBTV here. Yeah, that made sense. That made sense. That I almost messed up the intro. It just sounded a little bit weird to me, but you know, that's just part of the trade. So what I've got today is game number seven, where Trisha and four of eight are playing against Gensi and Rabbit in a one versus one tag team battle. So far, the score is three wins for both players, and on team four, five, eight, and Trisha, only Trisha has managed to win a single game. And 4 of 8 has lost all of his games, so he's not been having a very good performance today. But Trisha so far has been showing up big time. He's been pushing Rabbit and Gensei to their physical and mental limits. He lost only once, but won three times. Which is highly impressive, considering he is more or less the underdog in this event. He is the underdog in this event. Many would say that if they had to pick someone who they would rank at the bottom of these four, they would probably rank them in terms of strength accordingly to Gensei, 458, Rapid, and then Trisha. But Trisha has been everyone so far. He's in the Protoss, blue Protoss, bottom, middle of the map, going for Nexus first build order. And then we have on the top, Rabbit, going for. Barracks, Supply Depot, Barracks, Build Order, standard stuff, this is the most standard stuff. So there comes the next for Trisha, and now we're just gonna have to wait a little bit and see how this develops. Well, there's the music coming into the back as well, let's make it a little bit louder, just a tiny little bit. A little bit too silent perhaps. Maybe this level is a little bit better. Okay. So what are we looking at? Gas coming out there from Rabbit before his third barracks. He might not even get a third barracks. He might just go for the academy right off the bat, followed up by a supply depot. So double barracks, gas, academy, supply depot will be next. SV Marine scouting the map. He's looking to hurt a choke. He wants to find Trisha fast and attack the cannons before they finish warping in. But Trisha is on the exact other side of the map, and it is standard to scout the sides first right next to you. So Trisha will get that cannon up just fine. He is not under threat yet, and won't be for a little while, because that's the purpose of the cannon, to keep the threat out of your base. Although the sides here are kind of wide open, so there is a small chance for Rabbit to get very fast Stim and Firebat and Medic and try to run past the entrance. There's a chance that you might try to do that. But Trisha, scouting the entire base, of course, puts down cannon number two, might even put down cannon number three. Probe died, Stim is on the way, and Firebats are on the way as well. And it looks like the SFE there is gonna find Trisha's home base, which means that he soon will try to run right through that front door. That's the plan. Marines already moving across, Firebats have spawned. We're in the back, we got a factory already on the way. There is a chance he might try to go for a very fast tank push on that choke, but his triple cannons, nothing is gonna run through. But he might try to, he might try to. There's no cannon in the back here. Cybercore is finished up, we have no robotics yet. Just a very small, tiny little base focused on protecting that front door and focus on getting the economy going. There's a Robo number one coming up for Trisha. We have Rabbit waiting in the front. More Firebats are on. He's just making as many Firebats and Megs as he can to try and brute force their way through, then hopefully hit the probes in the back. Is it gonna work? This should be able to walk through. It should be possible but he might not. Yeah, there he goes. He runs for it, guns for it, right over the right side, gets right into that main base. Gonna run for the probes. Probes are in danger, in a lot of danger. Firebats are on the scene, probes are unstacking. A couple of them are unstacking, trying to block the path, trying to block the way, but they're running right through, getting on top of the probes. He killed a bunch of them. He had about, I'd say, 28. Killed eight of them. Could have killed a lot more because they are, you know, a little bit damaged. They did lose some HP, but most of them did stay alive, and that is good for Trisha. That is going to be his saving grace. Because Rabbit did not start his first command center yet. There it is. It's a little bit delayed, a little bit slow. Double starport, they're on the way. 
So he's gonna go for an all-in Wraith defense against the shuttle play that Trish is so very good at. It's gonna be all about the raids, sniping shuttles right out of the air. So Momarine's coming across the map, he's gonna keep up the pressure. He doesn't have to attack, he just has to stand there and make Trisha feel somewhat threatened. So we have Pylons on the side, getting vision of the entire base that he's in. Pylons coming up on the side of his Nexus to build more cannons to protect those probes from probably what's gonna be a future tank drop. Support bay finished up, Reaver's on the way, and we have one shuttle unloading a zealot somewhere on the map. Might use that to get some information. It looks like he's going to unload it right here, unload it and fly back to his own choke. The shuttle will arrive a little bit after the Reaver spawns, but that's not important. Because the Reaver is going to have to be here to defend against the Marine Medic that might just try to break through. Although it looks like he's pulling back. It looks like I'm wrong. There was a chance that he might have tried to break through those triple cannons. But he sees the Zealot walking through his base and then decides to retreat instead of taking the risk. Rabbit never takes risks. That is the kind of player he is. He's, in a sense... Oh, well, actually, I'm completely wrong. I'm completely wrong. Rabbit does not take offensive risks, he takes defensive risks. By trying to cut corners and save minerals for something else, and try to get an advantage out of that. So yes, he does cut corners, he does take risks, but none of those risks are offensive risks. Whereas Gensei, who's also in this best of whatever set, does take offensive risks, and does not take a whole lot of defensive risks. As I said in the previous video, there are two different sides of two different coins. And I hope that makes sense, because, oh, it probably does not. So we have the shuttle there flying into the dropships with fire bats and marines inside. We have five cannons in the back, number six. Oh, that's the second Citadel of the Dune. He made a little mistake there. Two Citadels of a Dune. Not something we often see, but it definitely appears to be happening, even at high level games. Oh, he cancelled it just in time. Cancelled it. There's the Temple Strike on the way. Chilled in the base, distracting. A Reaver inside. Couldn't quite get in. One more Reaver in there. And Firebats are loading on top of the probes, but the probes are running to safety, and the cannons are cleaning out the Terran drop. So no more dead probes for Krisha. He knows he cannot afford to lose probes, because if you lose probes against Rabbit, you will probably lose the game. He lost them already, so the chances have already become smaller to win. As you can see, his apply count is the exact same, and that does not happen too often in Protoss against Terran. You don't often see a Protoss and a Terran with the same supply on the fastest map. That's just unheard of, but it's something to look at right now. Uh, tries to get in. We have Marines on the high ground on both sides. Gonna kill them all with one single shot. He's gonna fly in from probably the bottom right right here, but the rays are coming in. So Trisha runs her back, runs back to his base. He's not gonna take a risk. As I said before, Rabbit does not take offensive risks and neither does Trisha. Trisha plays it all by the book. And he felt that in this case it's probably smarter to save the shuttles and fly away. But a scan comes out from Rabbit and he's got the raids prepared to try and take them down. So we're back at home, we've got weapon level one on the way, Storm on the way as well, and drops here on the way on the right side of the map, flying right into the raids. But the raids are not moving too quick. The Marines are coming in to try and stim. This is Reavers are unloading, it's th four Reavers. And there's a lot of real estate right here ready for the taking. So he's gonna shoot his entire load of those Scarabses on top of whatever he can. Kills Academy, kills Supply Depots, crawling to safety out of tank range. But Rachel coming in from the bottom side to try to take down those Reavers. He's gonna kill whatever he can, do as much damage as he can. One more Supply Depot goes down. Rabbit is supply blocked on 76 with 100 available supply. That is gonna slow him down quite a bit. Another drop there over the left side. We have vision on the high ground from those marines. So he's not... Oh, he finds the bottom left. His favorite angle of approach. But there's marines in between. Starts to unload. Reaver on the scene. Reaver shoots a couple of marines into the next life. Goodbye. It was nice knowing you. You served with honor. 
So we have this base now expanding. 68 probes. The probe protection is a little bit lackluster for this stage of the game. Because two cannons on this side and two cannons on that side will not kill two tanks in time to save the probes. But luckily for him, tank drops are not happening at the moment because Rabbit, a supply block, could not produce a tank drop and is kind of occupied rebuilding this lost supply section. Cutting armories now as well, have to rebuild that academy somewhere, where is the, he did not rebuild the academy actually. Did not rebuild the academy, getting more start ports for more rates, might switch over into Valkyries at some point, we have upgrades coming up soon. Marines are on level 0 attack, he did not get level 1 marine attack, that is a surprise. So big block of gateways there on the side from Trisha there. So it's going to be 10 gateways. That's a lot of gateway production. He's got another 7 right there. So 17 gateways operational at the moment. Getting more cannons on the side here to protect. There's a Nexus coming in as well to get the last couple of assimilators. Another drop there. Oh, that's actually a Corsair. So Trisha has been kind of slow with the drops. He's not been throwing out drops non-stop. He's kind of just building up his entire base and he's gonna hope to win the race by having a bigger stronger production than Rabbit. And that might just work because Rabbit is the one player who is a little bit slower than the rest. Just a little bit slower than the rest. So Trisha deciding to go for this very heavy macro production gateway style might just be the right choice to make. It might just have been the right choice to make. The shuttles are loading up, big gateway army ready to go and attack the front, but we have five supply depots, seven bunkers filled up with marines. No fire bats in between, but the marines should do the trick in defending, although the marines don't have level one attack, so they won't really do big damage. Flies in over the front, unloading behind the wall. It's gonna be a pincer move from both sides. We've got an arc in the air. No detection. Templar on the scene. Templar swarms on the Wraith. Wraith dodging, but a little bit late. Took a lot of damage. Uh, supply deeps are going down. Wraith flying back and forth. Sniped the Templar, but this is a lot of supply. A lot of army breaking down a front door. And not a whole lot here to protect. There were 12 Marines in the bunkers. Nothing on the high ground. No tanks on the high ground. So this frontal defense was a little bit weak. And there's not much that not much left in the base, to be honest. It's a lot of Wraiths. 168 supply, but pretty much all the Zealots have survived that attack on the front. Marines here stimming, trying to prevent damage. Ooh, a big wave of tanks spawns just on time to save the day. Or so I hope. Let's hope that all those tanks spawning will save the day. Starts building a wall here. Very smart stuff from Raps, he knows exactly what to do. Has to build a wall to protect his tanks from those Zealots. But Zealots are just going to keep on coming, and he's going to keep on coming. Shuttles flew right back home to load up another shuttle drop. And yet, look at how much has died here in the front. We have eight bunkers, five supply depots, whatever this was, a turret, more supply depots and turrets, and a lot of bunkers and supply depots being built here in the front. Lost a lot of marines and raids as well. It's mostly the tanks that are keeping him alive. Level one attack and armor finishing up right about now. And there they are. Level 1 attack. Now armor finished up for those tanks. Shuttle drop comes in. Wraiths are mispositioned. Flies in. Gonna try to unload on top of those SCVs. But no, they are empty. It's just an empty shuttle. Aimed to distract. Aimed to pull the SCVs away from the minerals. And hopefully try to, you know, make the defense a little bit harder on the economy. The war effort is going on though. Shuttle drop once again coming over the front. Big mass attack, dying to tanks, raids coming from the right, trying to snap the shuttles, but there's three of them, and they're empty yet again. He's mostly just trying to distract from these units attacking in the front. Rabbit is supply block, lost a lot of supply depots in the front, and has not yet rebuilt them. Now Rabbit is starting to get into trouble. Is rapidly trying to build new supply depots on the top left, but his entire bottom right section is not properly protected by any tanks at all. They're all in the back and on the left. But his right side section, very weak to zealot attacks. And Trisha is very quickly and smartly observing this fact and moving most of his units here to the right. 
There's some tanks though in the dropship. Gonna put them on the high ground to protect and to get some coverage over this bottom right section. Tanks. Oh, this time it's a real drop though. It's a real drop. Wraith's not here to protect. Starts a load. Temple on the scene. Gets the 74 energy. One more energy and he would have killed a lot of SCVs, but it wasn't meant to be. But that might have just been enough because look at his minerals, they're low. Rabbit is struggling, he's suffering, he's hurting under this pressure. He always been built on the middle, not really caring about how they look as long as he has them and reduces the distance to Rabbit's base. That's all he cares about, gateways on the middle, highly effective. Brock comes in yet again, bottom left. Flies away from the Marines, so avoids the Marines, flies to the backside, does not unload anything. It's empty, again. He just sends in shuttles to try and force Rabbit to lose income from pulling the SCVs to safety. It's effective, apparently. Apparently, it is effective. Apparently, you don't have to actually drop anything. Just send in the shuttles, because your opponent, the Terran, does not know that those shuttles are completely empty. So scans this little section of his base, and it's just gateway units running across the map with level one armor, one attack, level two attack and weapon on the way, shield on the way as well. Tanks are in one one, will soon be on two two, but it's a race against the clock. He's trying to rebuild those starports, but the starports are gonna take it down yet again. Tanks and high ground they're still firing, still supporting. True. This time it's a real shuttle drop. Coming in hot. Rabbit does not run away, loses a lot of them. 46 SCVs dead and gone, eliminated, wiped from existence. Gonna take down those tanks in the high with some storms, and that should give him easy access to killing everything here on the right. So Rabbit now in a whole lot more trouble than before. Rabbit who fell the beast, 458, might now get slaughtered by Rabbit who killed even more SCVs because he had a second Templar inside the shuttle. He's pretty much completely dead and gone. All he's got left is 20 SCVs, and they're kind of spread about the base. So they're not actually all mining minerals. Some of them are mining gas. He's got a lot of gas. So you could pull all of those SCVs onto the minerals, and he's doing exactly that. Pulling as many SCVs as he can towards the minerals, and he's going to ignore the gas. He's losing the bottom right here, though. The right side section has been the target of Trish's aggression so far. Some tanks here though are covering this entrance point, so it's making it a little bit harder to drag those cells into the right side. So they're completely empty. These shuttles though here, they have some stuff in them. Yes, that's about six units, two Templars, four zealots coming in over the right. Starts all over the top of the tanks and the SCVs, two Templars on the scene. Templars storming right through the pathway of that SCD line. But the Congo line of SCDs stays alive with pretty much no HP at all. Look at this one. 4 HP. Just one more hit from a storm and they're all dead and gone. But the rabbit has so far been able to stand upright in the face of this hurricane. He's doing it, but more gateways are coming out from Trisha. Trisha is just mass gateway manning this. He's just going full on the simplest strategy, but apparently a highly effective strategy. As long as you can multitask, produce and drop at the same time and attack all at the same time, you can make this very simple strategy that is hard to pull off work very effectively. So relocate his barracks to build a wall to keep these illegal aliens out of his base. A true Trumpian rabbit loves the wall and he built it but now shuttle drop comes in right snipes it but it's empty another drop comes in over the right there though distraction drops happening all the time and it's unload cells on top of the SCDs. a couple of them went down even more of them went down but most of them did survive a lot of storm drop there in the mix and he dodged the storm last possible second very very close very close so most of the tanks are still here on the left he's unseeching He's sieging some of them, not unseeging, he's actually sieging them up. So Rabbit has managed to stay alive, but his base has been, I'd say, pruned a little bit. So, you know, like when you go into the garden and you chop some branches of a tree, it kind of looks like that. His base has kind of grown 
significantly smaller. He's also almost supply blocked, but he cannot build supply at the post because he is broke. He's broke, yo. So drop there, waiting on the bottom right. I'm gonna fly in over the bottom right section. Dragoons are protecting this entrance point. Raids are... Raids no. Shuttles are coming in. They know. They're in position, ready to snipe. Cloaking up. But the Templar unloads. Templar storms. It's gonna be a triple storm. Hits them again. The SVs were already on low HP, and there they go. They got taken down. Only 17 left alive, and there's apparently more coming soon. There's apparently more coming soon. Rabbit still standing. He has to relocate some of his tanks to protect the right side. That right side has been a thorn. Or, to be more precise, Trisha has been a thorn in Rabbit's right side. It's not been allowed to exist. Unharmed. Big fumble attack happening. He's gonna try to reduce the amount of tanks a little bit. There's some shuttles with Zealous inside. Gonna drop on top of the tanks to reduce the tank amount even more. Strategic use of shuttles. He built himself a very nice wall. You cannot break through. This machine shop blocking his entire pathway for those tanks to hide behind. And it's working really well. All those small little details of building walls to keep these Protoss out has been working. He's still alive. He should have been dead long ago. But he's staying alive. But he's now going to clear out the shuttles. We have 2-2 attack there on the tanks. Level 3 is on the way. Lost most of his armory, so level 3 armor not happening. Goes over 2-1-2. Drop comes in yet again. Snipes a shuttle, but it ooh, does not unload. Got it just in time. Gonna place some mines in the front and hope that the mines will kill at least some of the zealots and dragoons walking through the front door. There's an observer here on the scene though, so the mines are detectable. So it's not quite electable. But they do get some kills. They do get some kills. But the advancement is scary. It's mostly the upgrades for Rabbit that are keeping him alive. Look at the kill count. 18 kills, 18 kills, 12 kills. The kill counts are so ridiculously high on those tanks. 21, 13, 9, 6, a lot of kills in all those tanks. They've been working overtime. Drop comes in, right side. SV's not running away. Rabbit calls GG because he knows that he could not dodge that storm on time. The raids had been killed by Dragoons and Observers. And this Templar was going to end the game within a matter of seconds. So that's game number 7 for today. We're going to do game number 8 tomorrow because we've got more games coming up. More than at least one. There's more games than at least one still up. The score is 4 wins for Gensei, uh, 3 wins for Gensei and Rabbit, and 4 wins for Trisha and 458. Trisha has been showing up big time, hard carrying his team to a lead. And when I started, I honestly expected 458 to do that, but Trisha is proving me wrong. He's got it in him to hard carry against Gensei and Rabbit, which is highly impressive because not many people can do that. Not many people can do that. So see you soon, have a great day, and see you for game eight sometime this week.